How does superbugs get the upper hand and become dangerous to our health compared to just existing in small quantities and not affecting us? When a superbug invades a human, there is this push and pull uh, where the immune system immediately attacks the superbug. And that begins with white blood cells that go and circulate and uh, when they see something that's foreign inside the body, they go and try to surround it. One of the reasons that HIV is so dangerous is that it specifically targets and destroys white blood cells. So the very immune system that we rely on to protect ourselves is what it goes after. And most superbugs in the past, if they um, had become resistant to antibiotics, they had lost something vital in the process. In that mutation to become resistant to antibiotics, they became a bit weaker. And that allowed us to retain the upper hand. The challenge we're seeing is that the newest superbugs are becoming resistant to antibiotics and they're becoming stronger. And that's scary uh, because we have to figure out a way to treat them. And with the limited resources we have of the various antibiotics that we have, um, there's only so much we can do once an ant uh, a superbug has taken hold in somebody's body. So one of the other ways that we can stay one step ahead of them is to improve diagnostics. So a big limitation in the treatment of superbugs is that we are often waiting until they're already inside the system, inside the human body. We want to be able to know where they are before they get to us, and we want to be able to detect them very quickly and figure out, you know, if only two antibiotics in the world can work with a, against a various superbug, which two are they? And so coming up with very rapid molecular diagnostics is the next step to figuring out how do we stay one step ahead of them. And this is going to be an enduring battle. Superbugs are not going away. You know, we're only going to be seeing more of them. And we need to put our resources into both treatments and diagnostics. What is MRSA? And is it growing as a threat? Or is it the same as it was, say, 10 years ago? MRSA is perhaps the most famous superbug. It stands for Methicillin-Resistant Staphylococcus aureus. So that's a fancy way of saying a drug-resistant staph infection. Staph is everywhere. Uh, there may be staph on my arms and on your nose. And in fact, a recent study showed that if you were to stick a swab into the nose of healthcare workers, uh, at least 5% of them would have MRSA in their nose. That doesn't mean that they're sick. Uh, in fact, the immune system can often keep any drug-resistant bacteria, but especially MRSA, at bay. Um, but what happens is that in a certain subset of people, MRSA can get into the system and can really wreak havoc. It's especially dangerous once it gets into the blood because it likes to then travel to various organs. It loves to latch onto the heart, to the brain. If you have a knee replacement, it will find that metal in your knee and it will glom onto that. Um, and what we have found is that MRSA used to only be in certain places, like gymnasiums and nursing homes, uh, but then it has leached out into the community. Uh, for a while, we made the uh, term community-associated MRSA, um, but now we don't even make that discrepancy because it doesn't really matter. MRSA is everywhere, and we don't really treat it differently based on where it comes from. Um, it's sometimes helpful when we're trying to track back and see where did someone get a MRSA infection, but the truth is it doesn't really matter because it is now ubiquitous. Uh, it's not just in nursing homes. It's not just in gymnasiums. And we have to be on high alert. And in fact, when a patient comes into the emergency room now with a fever and we don't know what that fever is from, we often empirically treat them for MRSA, meaning we give an antibiotic that would treat MRSA even if we haven't confirmed the patient has it because it is so common. How long do antibiotic-resistant bacteria live? Depends on what the pathogen is. Antibiotic-resistant bacteria can, uh, some of them, can live uh, on metal and wood surfaces for at least a week. Some can't do that at all. And what we spend a lot of time doing um, is figuring out what are the different places where these things can hide. Uh, a classic example of where a superbug can hide is in a, a, a basement, a damp, moldy basement, the classic thing that we, we worry about when a patient has a weakened immune system is uh, that they are going to be exposed to mold if they go and clean their, bath their basement or their bathroom. And so what we are trying to figure out is what are the environments that allow superbugs to prosper so that we can tell people to stay away from those things. How close are we to actually running out of antibiotics that are effective? 
Well, it depends who you ask. If you ask me, I would say that we have plenty of antibiotics for the most common conditions, but we are running perilously low on antibiotics for some of the emerging uh, superbugs. And the challenge we have is that it takes a while to prove that a new drug is safe. If a new superbug appeared today out of thin air, we would immediately start testing in a test tube to see what drugs we have to treat that thing. Uh, but then we need to test that drug. If we find a drug that works, we need to test it in animals and then in humans. And that process is very time consuming because just because a drug cures a superbug in a test tube doesn't mean that it's going to do so in a human. And we have to make sure that we protect people before we expose them to a new drug. So I'm not really worried about running out of antibiotics. What I'm more concerned about is coming up with a nimble approach when a new superbug emerges to come up with a new drug to treat people. And we're using artificial intelligence right now to hunt for new drugs. And what we're trying to do is streamline the process so that when we find a promising new molecule that may be a new antibiotic, to figure out a way to safely bring that quickly to the patients who need it most.